Hello friends, welcome back in this video session of UV spectrophotometric estimation of two components by absorbance ratio method. To begin with introduction, so this is also a multi-component method of analysis using UV spectrophotometer. So in the previous session we have discussed the multi-component method by using simultaneous equation method which is also known as Weyroth's method. So in this session, we will be discussing about the another method that is absorbance ratio method. So this method is also referred as a Q value method. And in this method also, we need not to separate the multiple components which are present in a sample or in a particular formulation. So without separating them from each other, we are able to estimate the concentration of each one of them so that is an advantage of this particular method and this method is a modified version of simultaneous equation method okay so what modifications we have that we are going to see in the coming slides so when we talk about the principle of this absorbance ratio method or q value method so there are two things what we need to consider the first one is it depends on the property that for a substance which obeys Beers and Lambert's law at all wavelength, the ratio of absorbances at any two wavelength remains constant. Okay, and the ratio is independent of concentration or the path length. So whatever the path length we have or whatever the concentration we have, so if we are taking the absorbance of a particular sample at any two wavelength the ratio remains constant so that is what this particular statement talk about and the second statement is it involves the measurement of absorbances at two different wavelengths one being the lambda max of one drug and the other being a isobestic wavelength okay so here and this particular concept of isobestic wavelength or it is also known as isoabsorptive wavelength which is playing an important role okay so, so uh, these uh, statements are very important with respect to this absorbance ratio method. So let's understand in a more better way with this particular figure. So uh, we already talked about the two drugs that is sodium benzoate and caffeine. So this is an uh, the red one is a spectra of sodium benzoate recorded individually and the blue one uh, that is a spectra of caffeine which have been overlapped on uh, the spectra of sodium benzoate okay now how it looks like you can see here in uh, case of sodium benzoate we can easily make out so this is a point at which we are observing a maximum absorbance so we can correspond uh, the uh, wavelength here so that is lambda 1 so this is a lambda max of this particular sodium benzoate drug so 227 we know 227 nanometer is the lambda max of sodium benzoate Similarly, we can find the absorption maxima for this caffeine, which is uh, at 273 nanometer. Okay, so these are referred as a lambda max of uh, this uh, sodium benzoate and caffeine. And simultaneously, we can also see here. So there are actually uh, two points here. So one is here and other one is here. Okay, so this is a point for uh, the sodium benzoate as well as a caffeine where both the drugs have equal absorptivity. So if I intercepted this particular point on this particular y-axis, so we will get same absorbance for this particular concentration uh, for sodium benzoate and for caffeine. Okay. Similarly, at this point also, you can see they are intersecting each other. So this red one and the blue one that is sodium benzoate and caffeine, they also have same absorbance at this particular uh, y-axis okay so this point is referred as an isobestic point so what is isobestic point or isoabsorptive point actually the term of iso means similar similar or same okay so this is a point at which two drugs will have an equal absorptivity or showing equal absorbance so that particular point is referred as isobestic point or isoabsorptive point and the corresponding wavelength if we plot it on this x-axis that is referred as isobestic wavelength or isoabsorptive wavelength okay so similarly 
this particular point is also referred as a isobasic point or isoabsorptive point and if you intercept it here so this will be an isoabsorptive wavelength here uh, so there are two isobasic wavelength for sodium benzoate and caffeine and that is again a characteristic wavelength uh, similar to that of the lambda max of each particular drug okay so uh, in this case of sodium benzoate and caffeine uh, we are considering this isobasic wavelength for our uh, calculation now that is all about the second statement what we have discussed in the principle now let's understand what we have discussed or uh, it was given in the first statement of the principle okay so what was the statement if your sample is obeying the beers and lambert's law at all wavelength and in that case when we take absorbance of a particular sample at two different wavelength and that ratio remains constant and that ratio is independent of concentration as well as the path length now let's uh, take an example we have taken a mixture of sodium benzoate and caffeine okay so this green spectra is nothing but a mixture of sodium benzoate and caffeine injection as a sample and the concentration taken here is 10 microgram per ml okay and we can see there are two absorption maximas here so one absorption maxima obviously corresponding to the uh, drug sodium benzoate here and the other absorption maxima is corresponding uh, to the wavelength of caffeine here and uh, we know these two drugs have an equal absorptivity at 241 okay uh, so this is referred as a lambda 3 this is referred as a lambda 1 and this is referred as a lambda 2 now similarly I can record the spectra of same mixture that is sodium benzoate and caffeine same sample I can take but now I am taking a different concentration I have doubled the concentration uh, of same uh, mixture instead of 10 microgram per ml I have made it 20 microgram per ml so you can see the spectra is looking something like this okay and now what has happened the spectral pattern remains same only its intensity has been increased because we have increased the concentration okay now uh, what the statement uh, we have seen in the principle that we are going to understand here with this particular spectra now for same mixture again we have a uh, two absorption maximas one for sodium benzoate and other for the caffeine and again we have same isobasic wavelength uh, for these two drugs okay now in such case if I am taking an ratio of absorbance at any particular wavelength let's say I will take the absorbance of this lambda 1 okay I will uh, consider now this 10 microgram per ml okay and whatever absorbance I am getting at this particular point I will refer it as A1 okay and whatever absorbance I am getting at uh, let's say at this uh, 241 I will refer it as A2 okay so for 10 microgram per ml whatever absorbance I got it at 227 I have reported as A1 and uh, whatever absorbance I am getting at A2 I am reporting as A2 okay now I can calculate the ratio of these two absorbances okay so we will get certain values here similarly for same sample what we have done we have recorded the spectra with the higher concentration okay the other things remain same only the concentration we have changed so instead of 10 we have made it 20 now what I am doing I am again recording the spectra and taking an absorbance at this A1 okay A1 for this 20 microgram and A2 for this 20 microgram or we can refer it as A3 and A4 here okay so in such case this A3 divided by A4 so whatever ratio we will be getting so this ratio and this ratio they remains same the ratio remains constant okay so irrespective of the concentration irrespective of the concentration and even uh, irrespective of the path length what you have chosen for recording an absorbance so path length of what path length of covet okay so path length and the concentration will not matter as per as 
if you are recording a ratio of a particular drug or a particular sample at given two wavelength okay so whether it is a 10 microgram this a1 by a2 ratio remains same even in case of 20 microgram the ratio of a3 divided by a4 it remains same similarly you can do it for uh, the other wavelength also so you can try it for uh, you can make it this as a1 and this as a2 so in that case you can record the absorbance what you are getting here and absorbance what you are getting here similarly for higher concentration absorbance what you are getting here and absorbance what you are getting here so these two ratios and these two ratios will remain constant and they are independent of concentration and uh, also the path length so that is what the uh, first statement uh, we have discussed in the principle okay and this ratio whatever ratio you are getting that ratio is referred as a q value that ratio is referred as a q value okay so let's say in this case i am getting here the ratio of 2 so obviously for this also i will get the ratio of 2 okay because of this characteristic feature of ratio which can be recorded at any two wavelength this ratio is also referred as a one of the qualitative test in the united state of pharmacopoeia so for example in a monograph of cyanocobalamin that is vitamin b12 uh, this is given as a one of the identification test to identify this particular drug so these are the three uh, wavelength which are given and we can record the absorbance of this particular sample at 361 and 550 okay so whatever absorbance we are getting at 361 divided by absorbance what we got at 550 and that absorbance if it is coming near to 3.30 plus minus 0.15 okay so we can confirm that is an cyanocobalamin similarly we can also record an absorbance of same uh, sample at 361 divided by absorbance at 278 okay so in such case if we are getting the value or the ratio as 1.79 plus minus this particular deviation then also we can confirm it is a cyanocobalamin okay so keep in mind this q value or absorbance ratio is a characteristic value and we can use it as a qualitative test it has been given as a qualitative test officially in the united state of pharmacopoeia now in this absorbance ratio method as uh, we have seen in case of simultaneous equation method also we have a mathematical equation so similarly uh, we are following the equation for finding the concentration of drug x and drug y so this method is uh, we are uh, using it for analysis of binary samples okay so same table we can refer it here now one thing we should keep in mind always when we are recording or calculating the concentration of drug with the absorbance ratio method is that one of the wavelength for recording will be the lambda max of any of the drug okay now let's say drug x or drug y so we are referring here the drug x as a sodium benzoate and drug y as a caffeine okay so you can select the lambda max of either sodium benzoate or either caffeine so here for example we have taken an lambda max of sodium benzoate that is 227 okay so we are referring lambda 1 as 227 nanometer okay and the other wavelength the other wavelength should always be an isobestic wavelength so for the sodium benzoate and caffeine we know the isobestic wavelength is 241 so the lambda 2 what we have chosen is 241 nanometer okay so uh, this 241 remains common for sodium benzoate and caffeine if you are going for absorbance ratio method and the lambda 1 can be 227 or it can be 273 so 273 is a lambda max of caffeine okay so you have option of selecting either 227 or you can take lambda 1 as 273 nanometer okay but this should be taken as a second wavelength 
okay and with that you can record an absorbance so here we have to consider the uh, terminology is qm so what is qm qm is nothing but the absorbance ratio of our sample unknown sample in this case it is a caffeine injection okay so that caffeine injection what absorbance we got at lambda 2 that we we are referring as a2 and whatever absorbance we are getting at lambda 1 we are referring it as a1 okay so that ratio is referred as qm similarly we can uh, have a qx so the qx is nothing but the absorptivity of drug x at lambda 2 so uh, exactly same way we also calculate here the standard absorptivity so we have uh, taken the standard sodium benzoate and standard caffeine whose concentration we have prepared it 10 microgram per ml so we know the concentration and for this standard we are recording absorbance so we can easily find out what is absorptivity okay so this absorptivity uh, we can uh, calculate as AX2 and AX1 for drug X at lambda 2 and lambda 1 and that ratio we are referring it as a QX. Similarly, we can find out QY by taking an absorptivity of drug Y at lambda 2 and absorptivity of drug Y at lambda 1. Okay, so that we are referring as QY. Then A2 that is absorbance at lambda 2 and A1 that is absorbance at lambda 1. Okay, and these are the terminology is what we have discussed so with that we can substitute whatever absorbance and absorptivity values and the uh, qm uh, what we are getting and we can substitute these values here and we can solve this equation we will get the concentration of drug x similarly we can substitute the values for this particular equation and we will get the concentration of drug y here okay so that is all about the method and this method can be used uh, to a number of samples uh, where it has uh, two components. One of the application is, uh, you can see here, the spectrophotometric method for simultaneous estimation of atrovastatin and niacin in a tablet doses form. So the solvent used for analysis is methanol and these are the two drugs, atrovastatin and niacin. So without separating them, simultaneously we can find out the concentration of each of these two. Okay, and in this case, the atrovastatin has a lambda max of 246 and niacin has a lambda max of 262. Okay, and atrovastatin and niacin, they intersect each other. They have or they show equal absorptivity at 258 nanometer. Okay, so this is a point at which they are showing equal absorbance and that is referred as a isobestic point or isoabsorptive point. So in this case it is 258 okay so in this case what we can do our lambda 1 will be 246 and what will be lambda 2 lambda 2 should be here 258 or you can have an option lambda 1 can be 262 and lambda 2 should be again 258 nanometer so either you can go with this uh, calculation or you can go with this calculation okay so the answer will remain same uh, similarly we have seen for sodium benzoate and caffeine okay so this is all about the absorbance ratio method thank you